Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial on Octane for Blender. This time we're going to cover Universal Materials. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is load my scene and we are going to convert this car built with Cycles material, Cycles principal material, and we're going to convert it over to Universal Material. So I'm opening up another panel here to bring up the shade editor. I'm going to save this file as a octane file. And I am going to switch this to octane, but I don't have the plugin activated right now. So I'm going into the preference and I'm going to activate the plugin. Okay, so now that I've switched it over to Octane, the first thing you'll notice is that the principal material has switched over to a universal material. This only works if you have the principal material active when you switch it over to Octane. Unfortunately, the other principal material will be left in its current state. So I'm just right now making sure that the Octane server is running. Now I'm switching over to the world and I am going to change the environment to the daylight environment. And I am going to draw out a ground plane for now, which I could use as a shadow catcher. I'm going to rename the plane and the materials correctly. Now keep in mind when I enable denoise, it's not going to work unless you go into the layers panel and select the output as denoise beauty. I'm also going to turn off the color response curve mainly because Blender has its own way of managing color and right now I'm setting the colors inside Octane to linear or off and letting Blender deal with that. Later on, I can go back in and turn off the one in Blender, and then I can use the Octane response curve. First thing I'm going to do is bring in an image texture node. You're going to have to change all the bitmaps to use the Octane image text. This is the only way it'll read the file correctly. I am copying the path and selecting the correct files for the base color. I'm going to wire it in. And since I've already got the image text set up, I'm just going to copy and paste it four times, actually three more times. I'm going to wire up the metallic. Now, since I copy and paste it, it should already be pointing in the correct directory. So I just have to open it up and select the file. and then wire the rest up.
Now I have to change the gamma to the non-color texture files because they're data textures uh, to one. Otherwise, things won't display correctly. So keep that in mind. If it's a color texture map, you have to use a gamma of 2.2. But if it's a data texture map, such as roughness or metallic or even normal, and it needs to be set to a gamma of one, which means that there's no gamma curve influencing it. Once that's set up, I can just copy this whole setup. And instead of resetting everything up again, I'm just going to paste it. And this is for the body front. So I just have to just select the correct texture files now. It's also important to keep in mind that PBR textures usually use four files, which is the albedo, metallic, roughness, and normal. And with those four maps, you can define the characteristics of the surface. So here we're just going to go into the lights. Uh, there's no texture files plugged into it. So we're just going to use a universal material. I'm going to set the BSDF to GGX Energy Preservation, which is the more accurate material model. And I am going to drag the color settings from the principal BSDF to the universal material. To get the roughness to roughly the same spot. Now, Universal Material defaults at 1, but Pixar has defined it as 0.5 is the more accurate setting. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to set Specular to 0.5. And that's just a neutral setting. And if you want more reflection, you can turn up the Specular. If you want less, you can turn that down. Since this is the headlights, I'm going to have to plug in an emission node so that I can turn on the headlights. Right now I got the colors correct, but I'm going to leave the power at zero because I don't want the headlights turned on yet. After I set up everything, I might play around with that and uh, turn it up. Doing the same thing right now, I just copy the whole light setup and paste it here. Now glass has a transparent or transmissive property to it, so we're going to delete the emission because we don't need the emission coming off the glass. We're going to make a thin wall because this is just one polygon, one sided polygon. So I plugged in a grayscale color value and that allows you to put in a value between 0 and 1. So I'm just checking the settings here to make sure that it matches up. The settings are pretty much almost identical uh, in many respects. Uh, if you know how to use the principal BSCF, you'll be pretty comfortable with the universal material. Opacity is at zero, so it's invisible, and that's not what we want. And the reason why, even though the grayscale color value is at one, which means transmission is at one, and it looks opaque, and that has to do with the albedo being a bright color. We have to turn it down. Which makes sense. If you add color to glass and you want to see the glass, then it's going to be less transparent, right? So in this uh, case for Octane, that's how it works. So now that we see the glass has some uh, reflection going on from the environment, and that looks proper. And I'm not exactly sure what material or which part of the model uh, this material is affecting, so I'm going to give it a pink color, pink purplish color. And now I have identified it. 
same idea, I'm gonna just darken the color of the albedo so it's more transparent. And as you can see, if I move it to a specific color, you'll get a tinting effect. Okay, I'm gonna do the underside. And this is pretty much the same thing. I'm just gonna delete it, copy and paste it from my other material. And once I copy it over, all I have to do is assign the proper texture files. So let's bring up the body rear. I'm just gonna do the same thing, which is uh, this is using four textures. I'm gonna delete the current material and plug in the copy and pasted one. And of course, the textures don't match up, so I just need to reassign the rear textures. Now I'm gonna set up the lights, but I can use the same setup I had from earlier on the headlights or the regular light. So I'm just going to copy and paste that into the blue and red lights and I'm just going to drag and drop the colors over. And using the power, I can increase or decrease the intensity. I will repeat this for the red siren light. And I will also repeat this again for the brake lights. Here I'm just testing the headlights. Now the wheels here, they all use the same textures. The way I set this up is that each one of these objects is just referencing the same uh, material. So I only have to set this up once and the other three additional wheels will also have the same texture files loaded up. So that'll make it easy. So that's pretty much all there is to it. The universal material and the principal material from Cycles have the same fundamental properties. Main thing to understand is the albedo, the metallic, the roughness, and the norm. So you can see that it's pretty easy to go from Cycles to Octane. The work might be a little tedious and I'm hoping that Old Toy one day will have some type of auto converter to have something like this set up for us easily. But that also depends on the node tree because all the other node settings are not going to be compatible. So I'm hoping that to make it easier in the future, we can bake down large node trees into these four basic texture maps. And then from there, we can convert it to Octane with the push of a button. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment and I will try my best to answer them. Thank you.